To compute is to count. We deal with many different types of data, transactions and records in databases, text and human languages, images and video, graphs and network data among others. Ultimately, all data may need to be transformed so they are computable. Codes of categories that can be compared, levels rank in an order, real numbers, decimal values, integers, or Boolean values. When we talk about data, they normally appear in a tabulated or matrix format, with data objects or instances as rows and attributes or variables as columns. As we employ computers to crunch data to find meaning and insight, we need to understand the basic form of data, their basic types and implications. The data type of a variable determines the kind of operations that can be performed on its data values. So this is something we need to pay attention to throughout the process. A categorical variable can have name values without an order. We refer to such a variable as nominal, of which values are from a set of names or labels. The very basic form of a nominal variable is a binary one, where there are two possible name values, true or false, yes or no, zero or one. For many variables, these labels are discrete mutually exclusive choices without an explicit relation. For example, a state variable can have values such as PA and, and Y. And there is no relation between PA and, and Y. One cannot establish such a relation as PA greater than NY unless another variable such as state population is considered. This type of variable is purely categorical, not ordinal. With the categorical variable, we can only use the equality operator to determine whether two values are the same or not. Ordinal variables are in fact categorical. The values are discrete numbers to be compared and ranked. But other than that, no mathematical operations can be performed on them. In fact, they do not have to be numbers. For example, an education variable with values such as high school, college, or graduate can be compared and ranked. These are name values with an order. An interval scale variable is one that is measured on a scale of equal sized units. Values can be compared and data can be ranked in an order. In addition, one can subtract one value from another to calculate the difference. A temperature in Celsius or Fahrenheit is interval scaled. We can say that today's temperature is two degrees than that of yesterday. However, it makes little sense to add temperature up as the total temperature. There is no well-defined zero point here. It is in fact misleading to take the ratio between two temperature values and conclude that one is 10% lower than the other. Without a true zero value, such a claim has little scientific value. So subtraction can be performed on an interval scale variable. However, division is less meaningful. Now, if a variable does have a well-defined zero value, it is a ratio scaled. Data related to length, counts, or money are in general ratio scaled. On such a ratio scale variable, many mathematical operations such as subtraction, addition, and division can be performed. So it is now meaningful to take the difference, to add things up, to divide, and even to multiply the values of a ratio scale variable.
The table here summarizes what we have discussed about the types of variables, what make them different, and how they should be treated differently. Think about data you have experienced recently, the types of variables there, and what data types you think they should belong to. This is a very useful exercise and a good starting point before putting your hands on data. Once we know the type of data we are dealing with, we can look at the basic statistics based on data samples. For numeric data, we want to look at the central tendency, variation, and the spread of the distribution. First, on the central tendency, we have basic statistics such as the mean, the median, and the mode. The mean is simply the overall average, often estimated by a sample. The median is the value in the very middle of the sorted data. The mode, on the other hand, is the most frequent value, or values. Putting these three values together gives us a rough idea about the, about the kind of distribution in the data. When the mean, the median, and the mode are all about the same, it is a symmetric distribution where the average is in the middle and the peak as well. When the values do not agree with one another, the distribution can be negatively skewed as shown in the left figure, or positively skewed, as shown in the right one. Quartiles are useful for measuring the dispersion of data. Q1 is the 25th percentile. Q2 is the 50th percentile, or the median. And Q3, the 75th percentile. Adding the minimum and maximum values to these three, we have the five basic numbers as a summary of a distribution. Graphic presentations of data distributions are often intuitive and helpful. So let's look at some of these tools. Box plot, histogram, quantile plot, QQ plot, and scatter plot. A box plot is a visual representation of the five number summary. As shown in the example, it depicts the median, or Q2, the lower quartile, Q1, the upper quartile, Q2, in the context of all possible values within mean and max. Often, box plots are presented vertically as distributions on the y-axis and x can be used to compare different levels of a predictor variable. A histogram is a graphic display of frequencies in the number of ranges or bins. Because of the bar representation, this is very similar and sometimes equivalent to a bar chart. And the histogram here is indeed a bar chart where the ranges have equal intervals. That is, each bar is about the same $20 range. If the ranges are not uniform, however, this cannot be interpreted as a bar chart, because in a histogram, what matters is the area of the bar, not the height. And with non-uniform ranges, the height is different from the area of a bar. When you take a standard test, you may receive a report about your percentile, the proportion of others with the grade below you. The quantile here follows the same idea. Now the data values are plotted against the F value or quantiles. You can observe the overall pattern and compare to other data. From the quantiles, you can also identify the quartiles such as the median, or Q2, Q1, and Q3. Again, you can assess and compare these values. When comparing two data distributions, quantile, quantile, or QQ plots are especially useful 
A QQ plot visualizes the quantiles of one variable distribution against the corresponding quantiles of another. The example shows the distribution of unit price at one branch versus that in another branch. The quartiles Q1, median, and Q3 are all above the diagonal line, indicating why or branch 2 tends to have a higher unit price than X, which is branch 1. A QQ plot is also useful in situations where you expect a specific distribution model on your data. For example, when you use linear regression, which assumes normal distributions, it is necessary to examine the QQ plot of your data distribution versus the ideal normal distribution. Certain remedies are required if your data are not normal. With multiple variables, scatter plots are useful for the initial data exploration and may reveal certain relations of variables and potential data clusters and outliers. The example scatter plots here show situations where variables are positively or negatively correlated. With other data, the correlation might be more complex. Or perhaps no correlation can be observed here. 